now we'll move on to the worst part of the week, Carl. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about Friday night SmackDown because you know I have to. Um, so we start out with um, Jeff Hardy and Sheamus. Do you know why, Carl? Because they need to do a contract signing. Because yeah, that match needs a contract signing. Not you know a title match or anything. That I, it's yeah. you know it's a match we've already had as well. But no, this one needs a contract signing. So obviously, fuck it, why not? Um, this contract signing actually involves a, a, a urine test for some reason. And um, naturally, when uh, someone's going to piss into a jar, that jar is going to get thrown. So um, it also ends with um, with Seamus getting covered in uh, well, what I hope was fake piss. Um, now, the one thing I did like from this segment was the fact that, because they're it, it, leading into this whole, you know, DUI angle and stuff like that, which is fine. That's what they want to do. And, uh, you know, you, we need to do the urine test because you're probably on drugs, Jeff. Um, fine, yeah. Uh, what I did like is the fact that, you know, in the inevitable sort of back and forth between the two of them, Jeff got the upper hand or certainly looked like he was getting the upper hand. Um, and so far for me, Seamus has just embarrassed him. Like in the match they had in every time he's attacked them or they've had a back and forth, Seamus has been massively dominant. So it was nice to see Jeff getting a little bit of offense in, in all honesty. Um, so yeah, I was, yeah, it, it worked on a level for me. Uh, what did you make of the promo, Carl? I mean, the, the promo itself was a bit bland. I did get a bit of a laugh after um, him dousing Seamus in his own piss and the reaction from Seamus <laughs> off the back of it. But yeah, I don't know. It's a, it's a weird one <clears throat> in terms of the angle because it, it's, it's obviously drawing quite close to home with everything that Jeff has faced. And obviously he's he's happy to sign off on it and to, to play the angle out. But partly it's in poor taste, isn't it? Like you, you, You've got to kind of admit that. But yeah, I don't know. It was a... Uh, I think to your point, why on earth would you have a contract signing for a non-title match that you've already seen like several times already that didn't need one? Um, just because so there was like a bit of a cop out. Mm-hmm. But, I hate, yeah, I, but, I hate the whole concept of a contract signing just because it's not consistent. Whenever they want them to face off and a table get flipped, then they do a contract signing. It, yeah, it has it's like, it's like no a proper bear. lazy book, isn't it? It's like why. Yeah. Every time you want to face off, does it have to be a contract sign? Just, I even yeah. slightly, I don't know if I commended them per se, but I was even happy last week when they just didn't bother with that bullshit and they just had Brian and Styles just having a face-to-face. They even called it a face-to-face because what's the point in having a fictitious fucking contract? Yeah, exactly. Stupid. Like really people, like We've already established anyone can make a match anywhere. There's no time for contracts. So well, plus, from a, a standpoint, like they are contractors of WWE. So they have the matches that they are booked for. As far as I'm aware, they don't have to sign a contract. Sign a contract every match. Every not, time. Exactly. It's not yeah. boxing. They yeah. are they're working for that company. They do what they they have the matches that they're booked. But anyway, yeah. I digress. I'm it trying to take sense. I'm trying to take a fictitious thing seriously, so it doesn't help. Um. So yeah, we move on. Move on, Carl. We have a a, a nice little tag match between um the New Day and Cesaro and Shinsuke. Uh, and surprisingly. Cesaro and Shinsuke took the win. So overall, all right match. Yeah, why not? Um, but they got a win over the tag champs. So um, I'm curious now, Carl, given the controversies mentioned last week and the lack of forgotten sons this week, do you think they might be pushing Cesaro and Shinsuke into the tag scene so that there still is one? Seems like literally it. the forgotten sons were just not on the show. Yeah, I think the forgotten sons are going to be a little bit forgotten for a while. Obviously mm-hmm. with the the whole Sami, Sami Zayn thing, um, you know, they've been kind of booking Cesaro and Shinsuke with, you know, Corbin for the last couple of weeks, which hasn't really made any sense. So, yeah, and the, you know, they for had me, like these two. That attack as well on Shorty G for some reason. Yeah, like <laughs> for me, like Seamus, uh, uh, Cesaro and Shinsuke are two guys who are phenomenally talented um, and they're just kind of lingering in nothing. So, you know, whether it's tag titles or nothing, I, I want to see them get used. And for me, this match was quite enjoyable it's still a shame that Cesaro wasn't the one to pick up the win because I feel like he for as talented a guy as he is he really needs to start kind of cement himself that way but you know yeah I'm I'm, I'm down to see them to kind of do something as long as maybe there's a bit of a payoff at the end of it I don't want it to just be like filler material yeah and going into that classic problem though is that they don't look like a tag team they need to sort yeah. that out a little bit we're, yeah. we're always a fan of a tag team that's a tag team. They've got a name, they dress like that sort of thing. Um, and we've mentioned it a few times, and that's the only bugbear I've got. Like, I, I think they work all right as a tag team, to be fair, like in terms of chemistry yeah. between each other. But it's even uh, like the uh, the separate entrances and stuff, they're just they're straight away, you don't, you know what I mean? Like, he's, they, they've, they've done work on Cesaro's entrance now where he like, comes from the Matrix almost, where Shinsuke's 
he used to have a fantastic entrance back in the day then they've like ruined him with his weird new theme and his heel gimmick and stuff and it's a bit like yeah just get on the same page have have some sort of combination between that and come out with like these cool matrix guys with awesome theme music yeah but um yeah i hope that they, they might lean if they're going to push him towards tag glory they might lean into that sort of thing but um it remains to be seen but an interesting result anyway and then we move into probably the best match of the night carl the best match of the night we have um the final of the intercontinental championship tournaments we have aj styles versus daniel bryan and the pair put on an absolute clinic to be fair fantastic match a nice long match as well it was great to see the pair of them together they've got great chemistry in the ring um i have nothing bad to say about this match at all um result wise we saw aj styles take the win uh, which for me it was the the right result um i was a bit concerned the concept brian was pitching when he's like i'm gonna be a fighting champion defend the title every he's like we're already seeing apollo come out and be a fighting champion with the u.s title and we're already seeing cody come out every week with the tnt title it just feels a bit more of the same like you're just looking at all the shows and going let's do that um and I'm I'm not an against it, but it almost would have felt a little bit dull for me if Brian had won the title and we'd have had that sort of open challenge every week with this as well. Um, and I prefer the the sort of heel arc with Styles taking the belt and is now like you will get a shot if you deserve a shot and and almost being a bit smug about it. Um, so I, I'm interested to see where Styles goes with this, and I believe this is the first time he's ever won it as well. So that's um, it's nice to see him get the win on that result. Yeah, definitely. I I loved this match this is this is the kind of match that's right up my alley for me this is candidate for best match of the year oh yeah, yeah. um i i thoroughly enjoy it like normally for I, i'm you know i'm not gonna lie i i will skip through several matches like sometimes a lot of the matches if i don't really care about them and i'll watch more for like the storylines and to see how you know the plot progresses and so on and so forth it's very rare that i go to you know what i'm gonna watch a, a wrestling contest from from bell to bell and just yeah. sit back and watch the whole thing. And this was one that, you know, you absolutely could not fast forward this match. This was a this was a clinic. It was it was so, so good. And it was um it went super long and it didn't feel like it wrote it overran, which for me is a testament to a fantastic match. Is when you do you don't you don't realise you've just, you know, spent 30, 40 thing. minutes. On paper, you look at this card and you go, Fuck, there wasn't much happening on SmackDown. But that's because this match was a long but you don't like you say you didn't feel it. I watched SmackDown. It didn't feel like I was watching this thing for fucking ages, but it was just quite a small card because they gave some time to this match. And sometimes you need that when when you're putting on something like that. Yeah, go for it. And it was definitely well deserved. Um, right. So sadly, it kind of uh, goes downhill from here. I'll be honest with you, Cal. <laughs> <laughs> so we have uh, a tag champ celebration, um, which, to be honest, is a little bit more of the same of what happened on Raw. Um, so the tag champs come out to have they, they got balloons this time they're celebrating their victory and the fact that they're the tag champs um, again Bailey trying to be a heel and just sounding fucking cartoonish and silly with the ding dong stuff I was like wh- what is that like I don't know it just feels a bit silly um, so then we obviously get Bliss, Bliss and Cross coming out to interrupt um, it's quite funny I quite like the, the back and forth the, the, the character should I say because um, Bailey was about to read a poem to Sasha and then uh, Alexa felt the need to interrupt because of the poem, which I thought tickled me, you know. Um, so then they're having a bit of a back and forth, and we get the Iconics appearing on the screen. Um, so they start giving uh, Sasha Banks down the banks, as it were. Um, and then, basically, it results in Bliss and Cross attacking uh, Sasha and, and Bailey, and then all-out brawl, and obviously just setting up for the triple threat for Backlash. Um, again, it wasn't bad, it just... It was like, we already know we're having a triple set. We've already had this sort of whole thing set up. Do we really need this segment again? Um, sort of again, you know what I mean? But uh, what do you make of a card? Did you get any enjoyment out of it other than seeing Alexa Bliss again? <laughs> I mean, how can you not get enjoyment out of that? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's one of them. It was just, it felt a little bit like filler material because it's not really, it doesn't really progress anything when you've, you've got a, a match that is going to culminate in and it's kind of like this is just to amp that up but nothing significant is going to happen i feel like we see this far too much it's like well we've got this match in a few days time let's make it relevant by doing a variation of the match it's like well what's the point do something else do something a bit more compelling to make us care about the match what happened to like having i don't know nikki cross in a match against sasha banks exactly you know just a singles match to hype up the inevitable tag match and you know you then like usually you would get like 
Cross gets the win, so then you go, ooh, are the tag champs safe? I don't know. Um, but you don't know. We're just going to do constant fucking promos and brawls. It's the same with um, with with a lot of other stuff. It's all like, let's just keep promoing it to death until we get to the pay-per-view because we don't really know what else to do to hype it up. It's a shame. It happens a lot. Yeah, just lazy. Mm. Laziness. Thanks, Pritchard. <laughs> Uh, so um, so then we we closed the night out, Carl, on um, a big old six-man tag match. Now uh, we have Braun Strowman and Heavy Machinery. That's right. Tucker's back. We've got old Tuck back. Yeah. Versus uh, Miz, Morrison and Ziggler because, I don't know, Ziggler didn't like Otis at one point. I, you know, I, I'm not even sure that's you know still a thing. I don't know. For me, it just makes perfect sense to have Ziggler part of Miz and Morrison. They are just... The same people, <laughs> like yeah, it, it, it is. It, it's a fantastic stable if you just make it happen. Like it's so good. Yeah, I mean the the reason he was there is very loose, but they do bounce off each other well. They suit each other. Like they all enter together, and as much as like they all enter to their own theme music, it was done in that typical style that that Miz and Morrison do, where Miz comes out and then his his, his music cuts, and then Morrison comes out, and they all walk down together, and they've done the same with Ziggler. So Ziggler sort of joined them, and it, it did gel really well in terms of the way they 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 were they were cohesive as a as a team as a trio. Sadly, not cohesive enough to take the win. Um, so we see typically Strowman being the dominant Strowman that he is. We see Otis at one point call for everyone's outside of the ring at this point, bar Otis, and then Otis signals. I didn't realize we had a signal for it, but he signals for um, the the Strowman Express. So, um, and for those who don't know, that's when uh, Braun Strowman pretends to be a train and circles around the ring like a big train. Because, you know, that's our universal champ. guys. <laughs> I, um, I'll stress that earlier in the night, we had um, Tucker encouraging Otis to cash in and was sort of suggesting, like, this is the night, this is the night to cash in. Uh, we didn't see such a cash in. Uh, what we did see, weirdly, was, um, you know, during the match, we we cut to um, the screen comes up with with Baron Corbin. Um, I, I, I'm interested in how you feel about this because I felt this is really odd, and I've not been um, I've not been on Corbin's case the last few weeks, and it's going to be the same again. I don't uh, right. So Corbin for some reason asked the cameraman to follow him. Don't know why. Um, to go and speak to Mandy, who didn't come out to the ring like she normally does with Otis. And he goes over to Mandy and he's basically addressing the fact that like, oh, you told him to steal the crown. And she was like, oh, it was just a joke. And then he's sort of in a creepy corbin way trying to flirt with her, saying like, oh, you you know, you you, you made him wear the crown because you want him to be like me and so on like that. Uh, and then o- almost unnecessarily, Otis loses his shit to the point that he like, he leaves the match, runs backstage to beat the shit out of Corbin just for talking to and slightly flirting with Mandy. I, I don't know. To me, it just felt really kind of odd. Like, couldn't yeah. she have just said to him, yeah, piss off Corbin, you know, I'm not interested. Like, you didn't even get long enough to know whether Mandy was actually into him or not, which I doubt, she, I don't know if that's where they're going with it or not. But, like, he just proper, like, over-possessively ran in and just beat the shit out of the guy for talking to her. I found that really kind of an odd booking choice. Yeah. I, I feel like where they're going to go with it is Otis is probably going to lose his opportunity to the money in the bank. Um by something similar where he gets distracted and tries to save Mandy, gets counted out or something. Do you know what I mean? Ends mm-hmm. up losing it that way. I feel like they're, they're trying to build it up. The he might have this amazing opportunity, but his little peach or whatever is going to mean more than him, uh, more to him than than that, and it's going to basically co- like cost him at the end of the day. But I, I really don't like Otis. I'm, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Yeah. I'm just not. I'm not a fan. I think it's it's played out. It's too like his gimmick is going. Oh yeah. And like rubbing his belly, and uh, I don't know. I just okay. Like he shouldn't be the money in the bank. Just do anything you can to get that out off him straight away, and just don't ever this make is, that. He should never be in the title scene. Like as much as people seem to like him for whatever reason, and I'm in the same boat as you, Carl. I'm not a fan of the gimmick, but he is the the comic relief of the show, and he, he should in his current form. I'm not saying he, he's you know he's a, he's a wrestler. He's he's a powerhouse by all looks of it. Um, but in his current form and his current gimmick, he shouldn't be in the title scene. It's as simple as that. Yeah, he's um he's basically just like a comedy gimmick that doesn't he's got he's got no business there, has he? He's a tag team wrestler who's won it as a shock and they've got nothing for like is he gonna really beat Braun Strowman? Is he you know what I mean? Like where where is this ever gonna totally And by all accounts we're just waiting for the fiend to come back for any legitimate um feud for Braun because he's uh, he's mm. having he's having some paternity leave, isn't he? Yeah. But in a fiendish way. Um <laughs> 
And to be honest, this this did nothing for Ms. Morrison and Ziggler, who were all you know they're good wrestlers and they work well as a team. But um, Otis was able to fuck off backstage, beat up Baron Corbin, come back and still win the match. That did not hinder anyone at all, him being absent, because, you know, just didn't. Um, Incidentally, before I I close off SmackDown, really good match for Tucker. Uh, I think he's a bit underrated in the ring. You don't, because Otis is just there gyrating and dancing away. You don't really get to pay much attention to Tucker. But when Otis fucked off for a bit, you really got to see Tucker actually perform. And um, I think he's actually a really good wrestler. Didn't notice that before. Um, yeah, um, <laughs> I, I, I think we've kind of been guilty of being overexposed to Otis and not so much to Tucker. And I think as as Otis fucked off, you know, he he was impressive. I think some of the stuff he did in there. So fair totally play agree. to him. Hopefully, you know, if they do kind of go separate ways on the, my, my only concern is are they just going to go down like a, a Luke Harper route with him, where he was a bit of a tag team guy and then they broke up and then you know he's he's got dark hair and a big beard. He's going to be a creepy mm. guy, and then he's going to get future endeavor. Do you know what I mean? I feel like they need to decide what they want to do with him and, and make him relevant. But he's he's definitely impressed me in that match. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I totally agree. Impre- uh, to the point that I go, uh, he might have potential here. I've, that's one showing where he looked really good. So I'm not going to like you know stick stick uh, my uh, my bets on it just yet. But um, he's definitely looks like he's got some potential there in the ring. Mm. So for me, raw. Uh, raw. Yeah, fuck it, Raw, SmackDown, the lot. Um, no, SmackDown this week for me was, um, I'm giving it a two. It was it was okay. It was much better than last week, but um, still not where it could be. But fantastic match from Styles and Brian. I don't want to discredit it. The whole reason it's getting two points is because of that match, in all fairness. Well, for me, I've actually rated SmackDown the best show of the week. And it's shocking, wow. I know, but I am giving it a three. And pretty much all three points for that match. That was the finest match I've seen in a long time. And for someone who is more character and storyline driven than they are kind of ring driven, um, especially in today's kind of product, that was enough to make it the standout show of the week. It was it was just a fantastic contest. So controversial, but. It, not necessarily controversial, mate. I think um, we, we're allowed to differ on opinion, but I think it's important for anyone listening to, to understand just how how much you rated that match alone that it was able to do that. Um, Cause it's certainly a match that people should see. So um, I think that's a fair testament to that. 